While there are many college prospects to choose from in this year's NBA draft that will be picked early, there will be many prospects who will be overlooked and picked later than they truly deserve. But due to weaknesses in their game, they may fall to later picks and rounds of the NBA draft. So to give these players the recognition they truly deserve, here are the 10 most underrated college prospects in the 2017 NBA Draft. TJ Leaf came into the 2016-2017 college basketball season as the 13th best overall prospect in the class of 2016 and entered his freshman season at UCLA with fellow top high school recruit Lonzo Ball, looking to turn around UCLA's fortune of missed tournament appearances. UCLA would go on to win its first 13 games on the way to a 31-5 regular season record, while TJ Leaf would lead the team in scoring average averaging 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists per game, while shooting 61% from the field and 46% from 3. His best game of the college basketball season came on February 1st against Washington State, where he would score 32 points, grab 14 rebounds, while missing only 4 shots from the field, and a 95-79 win for UCLA. UCLA would enter the NCAA tournament as the third seed, where Leaf would score 23 points in the first game versus Kent State, 11 points in the second round before scoring 17 points in a loss to Kentucky in the Sweet 16. While Leaf has been an impressive freshman talent in his time at UCLA with an ability to stretch the floor from deep as well as an array of offensive skill sets, there are many reasons why he would be overlooked or slept on in this year's draft by GMs around the league. The most notable reason is his weaknesses in his game, which includes his athleticism, strength, and defense. Leaf is mostly known as a finesse finisher at the rim, not finishing great when challenged at the rim or forced into poor shots when driving against bigger forwards and centers. Leaf will need to gain more strength to improve his defense while defending in the post and in box out situations in the NBA. Justin Jackson came into the University of North Carolina as the 8th best college prospect in the class of 2014. Jackson wouldn't look like an NBA-ready talent just yet during his freshman season as he would start his career slow as a freshman, averaging 10 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists, while shooting 47% from the field and 30% from 3. Yet the Tar Heels would still make the Sweet 16 behind the experience of Marcus Page and Bryce Johnson. In his sophomore season, Jackson was slightly improved with 12 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists during the season but he would actually shoot worse from the field and from three, as the Tar Heels would make a run towards the NCAA championship in 2016, before ultimately getting defeated by Villanova in the championship game. But during his junior season is when Jackson would truly break out of his shell, as seniors Marcus Page and Bryce Johnson left North Carolina for graduation, Jackson would step up in a big way, averaging 18 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists, while shooting 44% from the field and 37% from 3 along the way. His best game of his college career would come against the Kentucky Wildcats on December 17th, where he would score 34 points while hitting 10 of his 17 shots from the floor and a 103-100 to loss in overtime. He would go on to break North Carolina's record of three-pointers made by a single player in the season on the way to the ACC Player of the Year. And in the NCAA tournament, he would look to redeem North Carolina's heartbreaking loss to Villanova by bringing them to the promised land with three 20-point games during the 2017 NCAA tournament and 16 points in the championship game against Gonzaga. While Jackson improved greatly during his junior season, there are many reasons as to why he may be slept on in this year's NBA draft, mostly due to his notable weaknesses he displayed in college, which includes his strength, playmaking, and streaky shooting. During his time with the Tar Heels, he wasn't seen as much of a playmaker, creating for other players, averaging only two assists in his three years at North Carolina. 
even though he is more than a capable passer. In addition to getting bullied in the post by bigger players, he would need to add strength to his already lengthy frame to guard stronger small forwards in the NBA. In his time with North Carolina, Jackson has really worked to improve his shooting as displayed in his increase in scoring during his junior season but can still be seen as a streaky shooter as revealed during the championship game this year as he shot 31% from the floor during the title game and all of nine from deep. His shooting motion contributes a lot to his struggle shooting the ball as he extends both arms out when shooting. He would need to work on his shot more to be successful in the NBA. Frank Mason III was a lightly recruited player coming into college. As an unranked three-star recruit headed into Kansas as a freshman in the class of 2013, in his first season with the Jayhawks, Mason would average five points and two assists as now NBA talents Andrew Wiggins and Joel Embiid would lead the team to the NCAA tournament, where they would lose to Stanford in the second round. In his sophomore season, Mason's role would increase as both Wiggins and Embiid would leave for the NBA, leaving only Kelly Oubre Jr. as the only NBA-ready talent on the team. With his increase in role, Mason would average 12 points and 3 assists into the NCAA tournament, before losing again in the second round to Wichita State. Mason's breakout season would come in his senior season, where he would start the season with a 30-point performance and an overtime loss to Indiana. On the way to averaging 20 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds while shooting 49% from the field and 47% from 3. His best game of his college career would come in his senior season against Iowa State in a loss, where he would score 32 points, record 5 assists, and 6 rebounds while missing only 2 shots from the field and nailing 4 of his 5 3-pointers. Kansas would enter the tournament in his senior season as the number 1 seed, where he would score 20-plus points in every game in the tournament before losing to Oregon in the Elite Eight. Throughout his college career, Mason showed that he had a knack of getting to the rim and creating contact, while feeding on competition and becoming a big shot maker in the big moments, evident with his game winner over Duke in the college basketball regular season. While Frank Mason has had a great college career, there are many things that contribute to him being overlooked or underrated in this year's NBA draft, such as his notable weaknesses, which includes his size for his position at 5'11", Mason will have many disadvantages making an impact on the NBA defensively, as well as a role that he might play in the NBA. The question many NBA teams will ask is does he have enough scoring and playmaking ability to lead an NBA team as a primary point guard, or will he be able to make his most impact as an instant spark player off the bench? Dwayne Bacon was ranked as the 13th best college prospect in the class of 2016, entering his freshman season at Florida State. With his ability to slash, finish, and shoot off the dribble, the scoring guard made a name for himself at Florida State by averaging 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 1 assist while shooting 44% from the field and 28% from three during his freshman season. But the team would fall woefully short as they would miss the NCAA tournament in 2016. Returning for his sophomore season, Bacon would increase his scoring and field goal percentage to a 17 point per game average on 45% from the field and 33% from three. The best game of his college career would come on February 5th versus Clemson, where Bacon would record 29 points while shooting 10 of 14 from the floor and 6 of 9 from three in a blowout win. The Seminoles' fortune would change in Bacon's sophomore season as Florida State would earn the third seed in the 2017 NCAA Tournament. And in the first round, Bacon would record 25 points versus Florida Gulf Coast before finishing with 20 points in the second round loss to Xavier. While Bacon may have improved his stock for returning for his sophomore season, there are still many reasons why he may be underrated or overlooked in this year's NBA Draft. Most notably his streaking shooting. While Beacon has improved his three-point shooting from his freshman season to his sophomore season, it was still pretty low at 33%. He was also not really seen as a playmaker at Florida State, creating shots for others, 
averaging less than two assists in both years with the Seminoles. Bacon can often be forced into bad shots rather than passing to the open man. He would need to work on his IQ and his defense could also see some improvement as well to be a successful two-way guard in the NBA. Tyler Dorsey was ranked as the 38th best college prospect in the class of 2015. Entering his freshman season with the Oregon Ducks, he established himself as a dangerous sharpshooter during his two years with the Ducks by averaging 13 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists on 44% shooting from the field and 40% from 3 during his freshman season, and even better his sophomore season. The best game of his college career would come on December 3rd against Savannah State in a blowout win where Dorsey would score 29 points while shooting 12 of 16 from the floor. Where Dorsey really showed up was in the 2017 NCAA Tournament, where Dorsey would score over 20 points in every game he played in, including 27 big points and upset win over the number one seed Kansas in the Elite Eight to help lead the Ducks to their first Final Four appearance in 78 years. While Dorsey has shown a great shooting motion and shown an ability to step up in the big moment and make big shots while still shooting a great percentage with over 40% from three in both years at Oregon, there are still many weaknesses in his game that may contribute to Dorsey being underrated or overlooked in this year's NBA draft, such as his reliance on jumpers and shooting for scoring. He is also not great athletically and may have trouble finishing with contact over NBA level bigs Adding strength to his frame will help him tremendously. He was also not seen as much of a playmaker in his time at Oregon, averaging less than two assists in both years with the Ducks. Unless he improves on his basketball IQ on the next level, he may be reduced to a catch and shoot option off the bench. Sindorius Thornwell was the 41st best overall prospect in the class of 2013 out of Oak Hill Academy, yet received only two scholarship offers to play college basketball from North Carolina State and South Carolina. Thornwell chose the latter to create his own legacy with the Gamecocks, and in his freshman season, Thornwell and the Gamecocks would have a tough going as Thornwell struggled to find consistency with 13 points per game four rebounds and three assists on 38% shooting from the field and 37% from three, as the Gamecocks recorded a losing record of 14 and 20. While the team improved in Thornwell's sophomore and junior season, they would still miss the NCAA tournament in both seasons, as Thornwell failed to improve upon his numbers during his freshman season, that is, until he returned for his senior season, where he would break out with averages of 21 points, seven rebounds, and two assists per game with his best game of his college basketball career coming in a loss versus Alabama, where he would score 44 points and grab 21 rebounds in a four-overtime game. Thornwell would not only improve in his regular season, but in the postseason as well, as the Gamecocks would make the tournament for the first time in 12 years during the 2017 season. With Thornwell scoring over 20 points in each game in the tournament, leading the Gamecocks to their first ever Final Four in school history before their eventual loss to Gonzaga. While Thornwell has shown a tremendous jump during his senior season with the ability to bully himself to the paint and get a lot of foul calls from the point guard position, along with great rebounding instincts, there are many reasons why Thornwell may be overlooked or underrated heading into this year's NBA Draft, including some of his notable weaknesses which includes his shooting, which was pretty poor from the field as well from deep in his time as South Carolina. His playmaking could see some improvement as well, as he often misses wide open teammates looking to score for himself first. He will also need to cut down on his turnovers and improve on his decision making on the next level.
ranked as the 78th best college prospect in the high school class of 2013. Receiving only two scholarship offers, Bell signed with the Oregon Ducks, and from his freshman season to junior season, Bell developed into a dominant inside presence for the Ducks, averaging 10 points and 8 rebounds while shooting 63% from the field and recording over two blocks per game during his junior season. In his three years, Bell dominated the paint for the Ducks, becoming their all-time block leader in the process. His best game of his college career would come against Cal, where he scored 26 points, grabbed 6 rebounds, recorded 4 blocks, and 3 steals, while missing only 1 shot from the field. With the help of Dylan Brooks and Tyler Dorsey, the Ducks entered the 2017 NCAA Tournament as the three seed in the Midwest region. As Bell showed, he could deliver in big moments with double-digit rebounds in every tournament game he played in in 2017, highlighting his tournament with a near triple-double of 11 points, 13 rebounds, and Oregon's Elite 8 upset versus Kansas. For that performance, Bell was awarded the most outstanding player of the Midwest region on the way to the Final Four. While Bell has been seen as a dominant shot blocker for the Ducks, there are many reasons why he may be overlooked or stock may fall in this year's NBA draft. Most notably his weaknesses, which includes his size for his position at 6'7". Bell will be an undersized as an NBA power forward and will be at a disadvantage against taller, stronger bigs in the NBA. Also, his post moves in offensive game could really use some work, as a lot of Bell's points comes from cuts to the basket or in transition. He is not known for much shooting outside of the paint and rarely shoots threes. Marcus Keane literally came out of nowhere in the 2017 NCAA basketball season. As this unranked college prospect in the class of 2013, only scholarship offer out of high school was to Youngston State, where he would average 6 points and 2 assists during his freshman season, before making a jump to 15 points per game during his sophomore season. Keane would then transfer to Central Michigan, and after sitting out a season, Keen scoring would take off as he would become the NCAA's leading scorer in the 2017 season with averages of 30 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists while shooting 44% from the field and 36% from 3. Keen excelled in his ability to create and make difficult shots off the dribble while also using his small frame to sneak past defenders when driving to the lane. Keane's ability to score from any area of the court can be seen no further than in his best game of his college career against the University of Miami in Ohio, where he would go off for 50 points while shooting 65% from the field and nailing 10 of his 15 three-pointers. While Keane has shown that he is a lethal scorer with the ball in his hands, there are still many issues that arise that may cause Keane to be overlooked or underrated in this year's NBA draft. Let's start with his weaknesses. At 5'9", Keane may be an offensive force, but he will struggle to make an impact defensively with his size in the NBA. Another factor is his level of competition at Central Michigan. The Chippewas played no ranked teams during the 2017 season and lost their last eight games of the season. So many scouts asked, did Keane score so much because his level of competition at Central Michigan wasn't great, or can he really get his shot off over top of NBA defenders? 
Keane is also loose with the ball, averaging over four turnovers per game in his final season at Central Michigan. NBA teams won't see Keane as their primary point guard right away, and Keane may need some time to establish a role off the bench. Speaking of unranked players, coming into college, our next player, Mike Dom, entered college as an unranked forward in the class of 2014, whose only scholarship offer was to South Dakota State. And now South Dakota State, Dom would make a name for himself as a big man that could be dangerous from outside the paint as much as inside the paint, with an outstanding freshman season of 15 points and 6 rebounds, while shooting 55% from the field and 44% from three. Dom would come back for his sophomore season and have an even better season than his first, with averages of 25 points and eight rebounds while shooting 51% from the field and 41% from three. His best game of his college career would come against Fort Wayne in his sophomore season, for which he would record 51 points and 15 rebounds while nailing seven three-pointers. Dom would help lead the Jackrabbits to the Summit League Championship in both seasons, earning a tournament bid in both seasons, where he would post 17 points and grab seven rebounds in his last collegiate game in the loss versus Gonzaga. While Dom is seen as a talented big man that can stretch the floor with his shooting touch, there are many reasons why he may be overlooked or underrated in this year's NBA draft. Most notably his weaknesses, which includes his defense, footwork, and level of competition. For a big man, Dom is not much of a shot blocker and his slow foot speed can be taken advantage of during pick and roll situations. And let's not forget to mention his level of competition for which he played against, which scouts question whether he scores so much because he played in the Summit League for which the Jack Rabbits played against few ranked teams, or could his three-point shooting really translate into the NBA? Luke Kennard was ranked as the 24th best college prospect in the class of 2015, coming into the story program of Duke University as one of their many top prospects in the 2015 season. In his freshman season, Kennard averaged 11 points, 3 rebounds, and 1 assist, while shooting 42% from the field and 32% from 3. In returning for his sophomore season, Kennard became known as a lethal scorer off the dribble and on spot up shooting. Proved it in his play with higher scoring averages of 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists on 48% shooting from the field and 43% from 3 during his sophomore season. Kennard would record his best game of his college career against Maine where he would score 35 points and grab 8 rebounds while shooting 11 of 16 from the field and nailing 4 three-pointers. While Kennard has improved his shooting in his sophomore season, there are many reasons why he may be overlooked or underrated in this year's NBA draft, including his disappointing numbers in March, for which he would score less than 13 points in 5 tournament games over his 2 seasons. Compared to his regular season numbers, he fell woefully flat in March. And while Kennard has a sweet shooting stroke, he is not seen as very athletic or having a great vertical. He may struggle finishing at the rim on the next level as well as his defense, which was mediocre at best at Duke. These weaknesses may cause Kennard to fall to later picks in the draft. that's the list of the 10 most underrated college prospects entering the 2017 NBA Draft. Who is another college player that you think is underrated in this year's NBA Draft? Leave it in the comment section below, but until then, it's been your boy, Johnny Walker LA, and I'm out. Bye.